Hello and welcome to this session. This is Professor Farhat. In this session, we would look at the future value of a single amount. This topic is covered in a financial introductory course as well as the CPA exam. For, and this topic might be covered on BEC a little bit as well. As always, I would like to remind you to connect with me on LinkedIn if you haven't done so. YouTube is where you would need to subscribe. I have 1,600 plus accounting, auditing, finance, and tax lectures. This is a list of all the courses that I cover, including many CPA questions. If you like my lectures, please like them, share them, put them in playlist, subscribe, share them with others. If they benefit you, it means they might benefit other people. So share the wealth, connect with me on Instagram. On my website, you will find additional resources to supplement your accounting education, such as practices, true, false, multiple choice, as well as other resources, especially if you are studying for your CPA exam, I strongly suggest you check it out. A prerequisite for this session is the present value of a single amount. So it's helpful if you understand how we compute the present value of a single amount, because in this session, we are computing the future value of a single amount. The link is in the description. So what's the idea behind the future value of a single amount? Simply put, we are looking into the future and finding out how much our money will be worth in the future. And that's very intuitive. It's much easier to understand the future value than the present value. Why? Because as you are working now, for example, right now you have some money, you want to put that money today. Let's assume you have $10,000. Somebody gave you $10,000 and you have no need for it today. So what you'll be interested in, you'll be interested in if you, you'll be interested in knowing if you invest this money and you are 30 years in, away from your retirements or 50 years, you want to know after 30 years, how much this money will be worth. So the period, you are looking at a period of 30. Now we have to determine what interest rate, what investments are you going to invest your money in for example are you going to invest in stocks in bonds are you going to put that money in, a, in the bank are you going to buy treasury bond and that's going to determine your interest rate your rate of return your interest rate it could be three percent it could be five percent it could be seven percent depending on your risk tolerance so the future value is this amount here how much this money will be worth when you retire. So that's that's what we're looking for. That's what we're looking at now. Now to compute the future value, there's this formula here. To compute the future value, you will take the present value, the PV times one plus I, the interest rate raised to the nth power, which is the period. The PV is the present value. This is how much money you have today. For example, if we're gonna apply this formula to this to the number up there, we'll take $10,000, times one plus point zero seven raised to the 30th power. I'm not going to compute this because you're going to see we can compute this number real easily later on. It just this is how you put the formula in. Now you might a lot of lot of students ask why do I have to add the one because you are you, you need your original amount your original amount times one which is 10,000 your original amount 10,000 times 0 0.07 all raised to the third power so so the one is there just so your original money is there so let's look at a simple example to see how this formula work let's assume you have $200 today and you're going to invest this money for one period remember one period is we're going to assume it's one year it doesn't have to be a year we're going to assume the period is a year here at an interest rate of 10% so if I take $200 times 1 plus 0.1 raised to the first power Okay. Again, why do I put one? Because I'm going to take 200 times 1, 200 times 0.1 and add them together. Okay. So otherwise, if I know, I know that 200 times 0.1 is $10, but I have to take the $10 and add it to the 200 to get me 210. And that's why we put the one in the formula to account for the original amount. So if you take 200 times 1.1 raised to the first power, it's 200 times 1.1 equal to 220. What we are saying is $200 invested for one period at a rate of 10% will give you a future value of $200. Okay, so this formula can, can be used to compute the future value for any number of period into the future. Okay, let's assume we're looking at $200 invested for three periods at 10%. Again, I'm going to take the $200 times 1 plus 0.1 raised to the third power. 
Again, if I do this computation, 200 times 1.1 raised to the third power, 200 times 1.3310, which is 200 times 0 0.13310 equal to 266.20. Again, notice I use the same formula and I find this number. Now, your N, which is the number of period, this could change a lot and the I could change a lot. So rather than doing this computation, we do have future value table that decomputed all the factors. So simply put, if you find, if you want to find the future value of any amount, n equal to 3, i equal to 10%, all you have to do is to take this amount and multiply it by this factor, 1.3310, one zero and you'll be able to find out the amount so you could switch the 200 to 10,000 to 10 million to 50 million to any amount you want to okay and what happened is the tables they already computed all those factors for you so here's the table the future value table and this is not a complete table for example for example let's go back to n equal to three periods so the period is right here the period is down here so n equal to three and we were using 10%, 10% right here. And notice the factor is 1.3310. Therefore, if we take 200 times 1.3310, it will give us 266.20. So we don't have to go through the formula. Now, if I want to go back and compute how much the future value of $10,000 invested at 7% for 30 years, very easy. I'm, keeping, I'm, I'm having this money for 30 years. I'm earning 7% and I'm going to take the 10,000 multiplied by 7.6123 and that's going to be, let me do the computation here, it's going to be $10,000, $10,000 times 7.6123 and that's going to give me and. $23. So this is the future value. Notice, as I told you, I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to take um, 1 plus 07 raised to the nth power. I can do that. Now, let's talk about the tables, okay? Because remember, we looked at, this is the future value table, which is in your textbook. It's table B2. And this is the present value table. This is what we did in the prior session, which you can find in the description. And here's what we need to know about the tables. Here's what we need to know about the table. There are some important relationship between the table B1 and B2, which is the present value and the future value. Um, for the rows where n equal to 0, the future value is 1 for the interest rate. This is because no interest is earned when the time do not pass. So notice, when the time is 0, when the time is 0, there's no interest. When the time is 0, your money is worth what it, what is it worth today. Your money is worth what it is worth today, okay? Because you have no future value. We also see that we also see that table B1 and table B2 report the same information but in a different manner. So what's in table B1 and table B2? They're kind of the same the same information reported in a different manner. And we'll, I'll, I'll explain in a moment. In particular, one table is simply the reciprocal of the other. And we'll, I'll show you what does that. To illustrate the inverse relation, let's say we invest $100 for a period of five years at 12% per year. So here's what we're looking for. We're looking at $100 and equal to five I equal to 12%. How much do you expect after five years? Well, let's do that. So let's find out how much you will expect after five years at 12%. So, so let's find the future value for this amount. N equal to five, I equal to 12, and the factor is 1.623. So I'm gonna take $100 times 1 1.7623. So notice 1.7623, it's going to give me 176,023 cents. So let's keep on reading this. We can answer this question by looking at table B2 by finding the future value of five period at 12%, which is 1.7623. 1 if we start with 100, the amount that accumulate after five years is 176, which is we found it right here. Now, we can alternatively use table B1 here we find the present value of $1 discounted at 12% for five periods. Let's look at the other table. If we look at table B1, which is the present value, and we find out that 12% five periods, the factor is 0.5674. Let's see what does that tell us. 
So the factor is 0.5674. Recall the inverse relationship relation between the present and the future value. So this value is basically, if you, if you, if you really think about it, it's 1 if you take 1 divided by 0.5, 0.5, 5, 6, 7, 4. Let's see what we find. 1 divided by 0.5674. And notice it's 1.7623. 1.7623. So notice they are the inverse of each other. So if we only have the present value table, if I only have the present value table, I can find the future value. What I do, I'll take the present value, 0.5, I always put 0, 0.0, 0 0.5674, this is the factor. I'll take 1 divided by 0 0.5674, and it's going to give me the future value factor. The future value factor. The future value factor. So notice they're the inverse. So there's the inverse of each other. Whatever, If you have one table, you can find the value of the other. You can find the value of the other. Make sure you're aware of this. Okay? Make sure it's a very, it's a very important relationship. Okay? Also, uh, as we learn in the present value, sometimes you might be looking for something other than the future value. So we can solve for future value when I and N are known, just like what we did earlier. How much is $100 worth N equal to 5, I equal to 12%. So that's that's the typical future value, which is 176.23. 176, also, what we can do, just like what we did with the present value, we can solve for N when the future value is known and when the interest rate is known. Okay, let's look at an example. Let's assume we have $2,000 today. We know we have $2,000 today. And we want to know how many periods it will take to make it $3,000. So we know we have $2,000 today. And we want to have $3,000 in the future. So we know the present value. We know the future value. And we know we can earn 7%. So the question is, how long it's going to take us to find out how long it's going to take us to accumulate this money to 3,000. What's N? What's the period? Well, we use the same technique that we used in the prior session. Here, I'm going to use the future value technique. What you do is you take your future value, which is 3,000 divided by 2,000. If you put the future value in the numerator, you would use the future value table. So let's find the future value. Let's find the factor. So if you take 3, it's actually 3 divided by 2, but let's take 3,000 divided by 2,000 is 1.5. Since the future value, since the future value in the numerator, I'll go to my future value table, and I know my interest rate is 7. So I'm going to go to the 7 here, right here, 7. And I'm going to go across until I find the closest thing to 1.5. The closest thing to 1.5 is this number here. I go across and the period is six. So it's gonna take me six years. It's gonna take me six period to make to make this money, to make this money. Now, I'm gonna prove it to you. I'm gonna show you that if you invest $2,000 for six period at 7%, you'll get this number. Let me show you this. So I have today $2,000 and I'm gonna invest this for six years let me do this invest this for six years so after one year and it's invested at seven percent i'm going to take this number multiply it by 1.07 which is it's going to grow at seven percent it's going to become 2140 i'm just going to take this and drag it and after three after six years notice it will become three thousand dollar three thousand one dollar it's due to rounding but three thousand dollar so notice i just proved it to you that six years is the amount that you need sometime what happened is you have you have to solve for i what should what type of investment do i need to get a certain amount of money let's assume we have we have two thousand and two thousand dollars two thousand and one dollars it doesn't matter two thousand dollars we have nine years to double this money to 4,000. So we have 2,000 now, that's the present value, and we want to double this money, uh, to make it 4,000, and we have, we have nine years to do so. What type of investment, what interest rate do we need? What type of investment do we need to, to make this money equal to, equal to 4,000? Again, I use the future value techniques 4000 divided by 2000 it gives me a factor of two this is the factor i'm going to take the factor go to the present value factor and look at n equal to nine n equal to nine is right 
here n equal to 9 n equal to 9 is right here I'm gonna go across until the closest thing that's gonna give me the number 2 and that's 1.9990 and I move up and it seems I'm looking at 8% so if I invest $2,000 at 8% for nine years it's gonna give me $4,000 and let me prove it to you I have two thousand and one dollars and I'm gonna invest it for see how many years I believe nine years nine so this is year two and I'm gonna go all the way to year nine and I'm, I'm gonna invest this money times 1.08 so every year it's gonna grow at 1.08 and let me take this formula and drag it and in nine years i will have four thousand four thousand dollars so notice it does work you will have four thousand dollars now the best way to illustrate this is to look at additional exercises to show us how to just to kind of confirm what we just learned let's take a look at few examples to illustrate this concept so let's take a look at this example mark deposited seven thousand two hundred today that earn interest at a rate of eight percent compounded quarterly so this is important this is not compounded annually it's compounded quarterly it means every quarter the in, the money will earn interest then that interest is added to the following quarter okay and the 7200 must remain in the account for 10 years so we're looking at 10 years let me show you what's happening here so this is yearly one two three four five six seven eight nine and one more ten now here's what's going to happen every year it's going to be separated into four quarters one two three four one two three four then this year it's going to be separated into one two three four so notice if we add up all of the periods they will add up to 40 ends 40 periods why because the interest rate is compounded quarterly not annually quarterly so n for this exercise equal to 40 now the interest rate is quoted always the interest rate is quoted annually we have to do the same thing with the interest rate if we mult if we divide it if we multiply the period by four because remember we have um we have four quarters in a year. We have to divide the interest rate by four as well, by the same amount. Therefore, I in this exercise equal to 2%. So to find out how much 7,200 worth at 8% compounded quarterly for 10 years, we have to go to the future value table. This is the future value table. Let's erase everything from the future value table. And N, notice it's the future value, N equal to 40 and i equal to two percent so the rate is 2.2080 therefore i'm going to take 7200 times 2.2080 so the future value of this money is 7200 times 2.2080 the future value is 15897 let's make it 898 15000 eight nine eight that's the future value of the seven thousand two hundred so remember if the problem says it's compounded semi annually let's assume it says compounded semi annually it means every year is compounded into two every year is compounded into two pieces therefore eight years n will be um i believe we're dealing with how many years 10 years 10 years n will equal to 20 n will equal to 20 if it says compounded semi-annually if it says and you have to do the same thing with the interest rate you have to take the interest rate and divide the interest rate by two and we'll use four percent now if it says compounded monthly then we have to take 10 multiplying by 12 and it will be 120 and equal 120 and i don't have 120 in the table then the interest rate will be eight percent divided by 12 it will be less than one percent but the point is to remember that if they change the compounded period you have to change n and you have to change i so if you multiply n by 2 you have to divide 
you have to divide i by 2. If you multiply n by 4, you have to divide i by 4 because to use the proper the proper, uh, the proper proper period. C company invests 163170 today, earning 7% for 9 years. Since they don't tell us anything, we assume it's compounded annually. Compute the future value of this investment nine, year, nine years from now. So they did not tell us whether it's compounded monthly or semi-annually. So just we have to assume it's annually. So we're going to have I equal to 7% for this problem and equal to 9. And we have 163,170. So I'm going to go to the future value table. And N equal to 9. I equal to 7. So n equal to 9. I equal to 7. I equal to 7. It's left, right? I equal to 7. And it's 1. 1.8385. 1. Point times 1.8385. All what I have to do now is take my present value, 163,170 times 1.8385 and that's equal to 200 let me see 299,988 299,988 so that's the future value of this amount now in the next session we would look at the present value of an annuity Okay, and this is important, the present value of an annuity important, then we would look at the future value of an annuity. As always, I would like to remind you to like the recording, connect with me, visit my website for additional resources, subscribe, study hard, and stay safe during those coronavirus days. Good luck.